It's been a great CLL meeting. We've had three parallel sessions on therapy in CLL, and it's really interesting to see, particularly how some of the long-term data is coming through on ibrutinib, and how the data is starting to take shape on venetoclax and some of these new drugs that are coming uh, onto the scene in CLL. As far as UK clinicians are concerned, well, the long-term follow-up from Susan O'Brien, five years of data now on ibrutinib use in relapsed refractory CLL is, is really interesting. Um, some of your viewers might know that the UK CLL Forum has just published a big data set of real-world use of ibrutinib in the UK, uh, in Hematologica last, last month. And it's quite nice to see some of Susan's stuff mirroring our data. So, for instance, efficacy, she found the same. Patients with two or three prior lines of therapy did equally well and it was patients who are treated beyond fourth, fifth, sixth line who seem to be doing a bit less well with ibrutinib. So that's similar to our finding in the UK. But yeah, no, other stuff that's evolved with ibrutinib, perhaps complex carrier type is going to identify those patients who are more likely to do less well. The 17p deleted patients with longer follow-up seem to be falling off the curve in terms of staying on the drug. But of course that has the counter side if you are a patient that doesn't have complex carrier type and you're not 17p deleted or TP53 mutated, perhaps you can look forward to really long remissions on drug. So I think that's a good sign. We haven't had any longer term toxicities. I think hypertension's there, about a quarter of patients getting hypertension with ibrutinib and the AF rates sitting around the 10% mark. But so far, nothing unexpected is coming through.